All right, man, peace. You know, brother, Giannis Antetokounmpo, he reminds me a lot of the film The Dark Knight, which was a classic movie, of course, that I'm sure most of you brothers out there have seen. came out in 2008, starring Christian Bale, Heath Ledger, etc. And near the end of the film, James Gordon states about Batman that he's the hero that Gotham deserves, but he's not the hero that Gotham needs right now. And when I think about Giannis Antetokounmpo, it's pretty much the opposite. He's the hero that the NBA needs. He's not what the NBA deserves because the NBA is so super liberal. They really want inordinately hypersensitive mama's boy athletes to be at the forefront of the league to represent the NBA, to help push and promote the quote unquote divine feminine and the divine child, that concept of Aset and Haru. Well, Giannis Antetokounmpo has pretty much come out of nowhere to help reinstate old fashioned patriarchal values like being steadfast, being honest, being forthright. Very similar to Kawhi Leonard, who represents stoicism. These are attributes that the NBA does not particularly like, but it is what it is. It's what they have, and that's what they're going to have to deal with. And I think that it's going to it's going to establish a very good balance between star athletes or superstar players like them to try to offset the LeBron Jameses, the Kyrie Irvings, the Kevin Durants. There's not a particularly wrong way to do things as long as you're obeying the laws of the land and you're being an upstanding member of your household, so on and so forth. But it's refreshing and it's nice to see that a player like a Giannis, a player like a Kawhi, they actually can embody and exude patriarchal energy, masculine energy, not feeling as if they have to let everyone in on every aspect of their life. Of course, there is a, a certain amount of salesmanship that they're going to have to be able to to display because there are products there are assets but at the same time it's nice to see someone get on stage and actually thank their father like Giannis Antetokounmpo did when he accepted his MVP award we become so accustomed to these mama's boy athletes getting on stage at the end of the NBA season blubbering about their mothers whether it's Kevin Durant or or whoever but over the last few years we've also seen athletes get on the stage and talk about their fathers whether it's Russell Westbrook or Steph Curry, now Giannis. So that's a great thing to have that balance. And it's also very important, especially for a lot of younger so-called black men out there, to once again grasp the importance of protecting your seed. So anyway, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. Oh, we know, Scotty, you agree with me on when they should do this. It would have been great to see Giannis accept this in front of the Milwaukee fans oh. with his Milwaukee teammates. That being said... What was your reaction to how great that speech was in just a moment for him? Touching, very touching, amazing. And just knowing this young man's career and the journey that he's been on, uh, it's amazing. And to see that he's already a, a league MVP at such a, a, a young age. Uh, you know, I I take my hat off to him because I've, I've watched him, him grow. I've watched him develop his body. I've watched him develop his skills. And he's still got a lot of work. But Yeah, he has a long way to go. But what's truly exceptional is that he was able to win an NBA MVP award and have so many different aspects of his offensive game that he can improve upon. To see him come on so fast and be so dominant in our game is just amazing. I'm happy for him. Very cool. It was a great speech, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it was fantastic. I was there at a table in the back, and I, a polite way to describe the crowd throughout the night was distracted. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they were getting their drinks in. They were going out to other tables and having side conversation. You could hear a pin drop when Giannis was addressing the crowd. Uh, it, was, it was a special moment, and, and you have to have so much respect for him. We talk about things he can't do, like, oh, he doesn't have a jumper yet. Right. How about the things he does? Uh, Once again, that's the reason why Shaquille O'Neal called him the modern-day Superman. He's the modern-day Shaq, because he plays a lot like Shaq. And everyone talks about how the Toronto Raptors shut him down, so on and so forth. The Toronto Raptors have a historically great defense just based on name recognition alone they have a player in Kawhi Leonard who's a two-time defensive player of the year we're not even talking about first team all defense we're talking about defensive player of the year so he's such a standout on the defensive side of the basketball that he received recognition not just for the defense that he plays at his position but overall in the entire NBA they also have another defensive player of the year in Marcus Saul that's not even talking about Serge Ibaka and Kyle Lowry and Pascal Siakam who, if they have not made all defensive teams, they deserve to, or they will in the future, a la Pascal Siakam. So I don't look at Giannis Antetokounmpo's performance against them as a flame out or a failure. I look at it as an experience that hopefully 
he will grow from, and I'm sure that he will. That was such a reminder that, hey, like, he has such dedication. He's raising his own game, but the entire league, because he has that type of focus and, and expectation for himself, it's gotten better because of it. And that's we're, we're fortunate to have people like that, players like that. Right. And again, you still would have gotten that moment if you had done it in Milwaukee. And in fact, you would have gotten it surrounded by more of his guys, his teammates. Scotty, when you were part of those ceremonies, even if it wasn't for you directly, you still felt like the whole team, right, was being honored and part of it. Of course, because Scottie Pippen played on championship team. So whenever Jordan won the MVP award, he had to understand that it was a team effort. And Jordan did understand that. As a matter of fact, Michael's first year winning the MVP award was the year that the Bulls drafted Scottie Pippen and Horace Grant and took their first step towards actually being considered lower level contenders in the NBA. Of course, a lot of Jordan's naysayers try to associate his success in the playoffs with Scottie Pippen coming on the team. But the fact of the matter is that Michael Jordan is the player who took the quantum leap. Scottie Pippen was someone playing seven, eight minutes a game. He had very little impact on why, on why the Bulls made the playoffs that first year or had the success that they had in the first round. He was someone who was pretty much like a deer in headlights. Scotty looked like and moved like a newborn baby deer when he was out there on the floor. You saw the potential, but it was the fact that Michael Jordan averaged 35 points a game and was also defensive player of the year. That's why the Bulls were able to win their first playoff series that year. They were able to avoid the Boston Celtics and the Detroit Pistons in the first round. So that's part of the process. But just getting back to the point, Whenever Jordan won the MVP or Hakeem Olajuwon or whoever, you always thank your teammates because your teammates put you in the best position to, to do those exploits. Very special moment, I mean, to watch your teammates who I played with Michael throughout his career, to watch him receive those MVPs and just be there and be a part of it. You feel like that you had something to do with it. I think now that they take the guys and they dress them up in suits and <laughs> go, it's almost like watching the Oscars or something like, you know. It's a well, that's Adam Silver, super liberal, at it again. It's very obvious that Adam Silver believes that his lasting legacy is going to be how many changes he can make, whether they be for the better or for the worse. That's why they call them quote unquote progressives, because they believe that improvement is just in change. They think that any change is a sign of improvement and it is not. Visual war, which, which would really it goes to an individual, but it's earned through the team. Right. Um, you know, and it takes your teammates and the fans to help bring you along that way. And I would love to see it given out on the court again and let your teammates be a part of it. Yeah. And, or, since the NBA is so concerned about players receiving the adequate rest, they could give them a week off in between the regular season and the postseason and just hand out all the awards during that little intermission. Maybe they could do it like that. I'd say, by the way, the teammates are all welcome to come. Teams get a whole table, right? And you can, you can have whoever you want there. It's just that most guys are not going to then get on a six-hour flight and travel to go see someone else win an award. It's, it's different time. from in the moment. <laughs> right, and also the time of year, absolutely different from in the moment. Now, I, I will say one thing was cool, by the way, I love watching these guys get their trophies. I could watch this on a roll yes. forever. Um, I will say that last night during the red carpet show, Giannis was so confident that even if he didn't win last night, which win um that this would just be the beginning listen to what he said during the year you know i did whatever it took uh to help my team win it's just gonna be hard work that paid off but if i don't win it i'll be back next year trying to win again you understand it looking like the third member of millie vanilli <laughs> he's still letting his locks grow all right, so he didn't say he's going to win it again. He said he'd be trying to win it again. Do you think that he could win it again next year? Oh, I and I have no problem with Giannis saying that because I know that if Giannis and one of his focuses or one of his goals is to win the MVP award next season, it's not going to be in an unhealthy or egocentric way like a James Harden because Giannis dominates the basketball game in a myriad of ways, defensively, blocking shots, getting into passing lanes, diving on the floor, passing the rock, rebounding, scoring. So you already know that if Giannis is, is focused on being the NBA most valuable player, it's going to be in a way that is, is going to fill a lot of different roles on his team. If I hear James Harden say, I'm going to try to win the MVP award, what that means is I'm going to take 35 shots a game. He should think that way. He's 24 years old. He had the number one best record in the regular season last year. Uh, he knows that he's just scratching the surface in terms of his game. There are tangible areas that he can improve at 
and he has a work ethic to do that this summer. I asked him after uh, the press conference last night, I said, you know, why don't you train with other guys? You know, right. we see so many of the guys do this in the league. He's like, I like to come back after my summer with a surprise for the league, <laughs> which to me was kind of announcing that hey, he's got something more in store for us next year. Right. Well, you, you obviously, we know. Look, I've already done a video on Giannis and him not wanting to work out with many of the other top players in the league. A lot of cats disagree with me. That's okay. I just think that when you get to that level, there's not much that you're going to have that's going to surprise anyone. And by the time you get to the playoffs, the scouts from the other teams are going to know what you like to do anyway. You might as well work with the other players, understand what their mentality is. You don't have to sell your soul to, <laughs> to do that. You know, you can open yourself up. Great players from the past have always done that. They've always worked out together in the off season, or, you know, had little runs, whether it's in L.A. or D.C. or New York or what have you. It's not that big a deal. It goes back to the 60s. Like Bill Russell and Will Chamberlain, they used to play in street ball tournaments. Will Chamberlain used to come to the Rucker all the time. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Dr. J, they play together in the Rucker all the time. It's not a huge deal. But I understand to a degree what Giannis is getting at, but still, there are so many gaps in his game offensively that I think that it would certainly help him if he were to to open up his understanding on what it means to divulge secrets. You don't have to divulge who you are as a player to another player in order to learn from them. If Kawhi Leonard can go can go engage in runs with Kevin Durant and LeBron James, anybody can do it. It's not that huge a deal. But look at the progress in Giannis's game every season. From 6.8 points and 4.4 rebounds to 27.7 points and 12.5 rebounds. That's exemplary. Add a little bit more of that yeah, outside he, shot. He, he does, and as Dave said a minute ago, I mean, his, his jump shot is okay. It's definitely getting better, but we've watched this kid get better and better every season. So expect him to come back, and his shot is going to be a lot more fluid. And I just think his all-around, his post-up game, everything needs a little bit polishing up. and being. His post-up game definitely needs some polishing up. And it would certainly do him well if he could add a jump hook. At six foot eleven with a forty inch vertical, if he had a jump hook that he could count on with both the right hand and the left hand, it would be pretty difficult to stop him. And of course, build up his base so that his post game could be better. He could back his man down. He's very strong, of course, but Kawhi Leonard had very little problem keeping him out of the painted area. So that's something that he should focus on. The mid range and the long range, of course, as well. But if he could add that jump hook, that would be huge. Chris Webber had a great jump hook that he can go to when he needed it. Years old, hey, the sky's the limit for this kid. And he will be back. If he's not getting the MVP, he'll be getting defensive player of the year. Right. So there's a lot of hard work out there for him. Yeah, which he got votes for this year, by the way. And, and we could see that again. Hasn't been done in years. Um, I think it's interesting what you say about it being a surprise. He's so dominant. It's not like if we know that jump shot is coming, we're like, oh, good, now we can right. stop him. It's like James Harden when he first added the step back and then added the side step. He was doing that on... And then he added the merengue step, where he shovels his feet 500 times while dribbling the basketball. I ruined Instagram videos. You made the six step. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, then he added the six step. That was also on TV. Um, people, knew, people knew that stuff was coming. If you're that good, it kind of doesn't matter. I think he's... Thank you. Thank you, Rachel Nichols. Every once in a while, you actually make a good point. If you're a great offensive player, they already know your moves. They just can't stop them. So this, this nonsense about how I want to keep my development a secret from the other great players, it's, it's delusional. Be that good. He's, he's so talented. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's shot. Yeah. He's, he's dominant, and I think he just sent him a notice to the league that it's more to come. He jumped over a player at the Garden. Like, right. <laughs> in the game. That is the well, we've seen that before. I've seen LeBron jump over a player. I've seen Vince Carter jump over a player. I've seen Michael Jordan jump over a player. I've seen Bill Russell jump over a player. For those of you who've never seen that highlight, you know, for you guys who think that every player before the year 2000 was a plumber and <laughs> wasn't a great athlete, go look up the highlight of Bill Russell bringing the ball up at 5,000 miles an hour, jumping from the dotted line, and landing all the way behind the basket. He would have had no problem leaping from the free throw line and dunking a basketball. For those of you who don't know, Bill Russell was a world-class track and field athlete, as was Wilt Chamberlain. This notion that there were no great athletes in the NBA until the 2000s is buffoonery. Yeah. Just, yes, exactly. There you go. But anyway, that's basically it on that. 
Hopefully Giannis Antetokounmpo will continue to grow and progress as a player. I have very little doubt that he will because he seems very focused and goal-oriented. And I think that the NBA is in a good place, as I've already stated. I do believe that Giannis will be the, the torch carrier in the league when it comes to winning and being considered the best player. I also believe that Zion Williamson will become the new face of the league because of his quote-unquote swag. We'll find out. But it is, it's a great thing that you have stoic players like a Kawhi Leonard, that you have players who, who emerge from a patriarchal background like a Giannis, just to offset a lot of that male feminine energy that we see from a lot of the mama's boys in the league. I mean, and look, as long as the mama's boys are not, are not allowing their emotions to get too much out of control, it's not a terrible thing. So peace.